lesson 9 and 10, thalassemia and anemia. So your thalassemia class would refer to the, uh, this is, these are abnormal long or short polypeptide chains resulting from gene coding termination errors, frameship mutations, crossover in pace and deletion of codons, and fuse hybrid genes. Now to simplify this uh, this statement class, remember, if you recall, your proteins, specifically your globin chains, your globin chains are composed of proteins. Now I have a question. Your proteins are composed of what? Amino acids. Amino acids. Give me an example of an amino acid. Leucine. Okay, very good. And how does amino acids are formed? Paano na po form ang amino acids nyo, class? Starts with the letter T. Naalala nyo pa ba sa biochemistry nyo? Alright, very good. It's your translation. Translation. So meron kayong tinatawag na transcription. If you recall, transcription. Tapos translation. Translation into amino acids. Now, what happens here, class, sa thalassemia nyo? Yung globin chains nyo, which are protein, this would happen if there are errors or frame shift mutations during your translation. May mga nagkaroon ng frame shift mutations, crossover in phase, deletion of codons. If you recall yung codons nyo, naalala nyo pa ba yung codons nyo? Yung codons, yun yung tatlong letter na kapag translate nyo, they would convert it into an amino acid. Naalala nyo? Okay. Yan yung mga AUG, yung methionine, and so on and so forth. All right. Now, thalassemia class are gene abnormalities resulting in the deficiency or absence of one of the types of your globin chains. Now, do you recall your globin chains sa adult? Hemoglobin. What is your globin chain in adult hemoglobin class? If you recall. To alpha. beta. Okay. Um, hindi ko kasi madrawing yung symbol ng alpha sa beta dito. But let's just call alpha AA. So AA and beta beta. So what happens here class kapag may thalassemia kayo is that you would be missing one or more of your globin chains. So instead of having two alpha or two beta, you would have a single alpha and two beta. Now, your thalassemia class is more clinically significant in alpha and beta chains. Now, the reason for that, remember, your adult hemoglobin is composed of alpha and beta chains. They would become more significant sa adult because they would tend to manifest... Clinically, mas, mas lumalabas siya kapag sa adult, specifically related to your adult hemoglobin. Okay, let's start with your beta thalassemia. So your beta thalassemia class mainly affects your beta chain production. So we're talking about here class the production of your beta chain. Now, 
your beta chain production could be affected by gene mutations of your beta chain. So we're talking about here the genes class. The genes that express. Remember your genes express express the disease or the problem or the characteristic. Express the characteristics. Now, one of those gene mutations class in beta thalassemia is what to call BO, meaning absence of beta globin. Absence of beta globin gene. In your BO, no beta chains are produced. Then we also have a BOBO, which is an homozygous absence of beta globulin. No production of adult hemoglobin. So again, pag BO, absence of beta globulin. And ito siya class, pag inexpress siya. Pero kapag naging BOBO na homozygous, wala talagang uh, wala talagang beta chain. Thus, there is no adult hemoglobin. Another one, another gene mutation is your beta plus. Now, in your beta plus class, there is partial deficiency of beta chains and a decreased production of hemoglobin A. Then another one would be your silent beta thalassemia. There is minimal reduction in beta chain production associated with mild or clinical states. Then we also have a combination of your delta beta thalassemia. These are mutations in the delta or beta globulin genes. No delta or beta chains are produced. Then we also have the delta beta thalassemia, homozygous thalassemia. No hemoglobin A is produced. And we also have your delta beta lepore, which is the fusion of delta and beta globin chains producing hemoglobin lepore. So these are gene mutations class. So kapag may problem, remember if you recall sa mga previous sa cytogenetics nyo, you have your genotype and your phenotype. Yung phenotype nyo class, yan yung na-express. An example of your genotype class is, sabihin natin, um, sa blood type. Ang mother mo is A. Ang father mo, B. But hypothetically, ito ang, ito ang genotype nyo. Ang phenotype nyo would be the one being expressed kapag na-combine nyo. Questions? All right. If there are no questions, let's proceed. So after your beta thalassemia, we also have your alpha thalassemia. Now, your alpha thalassemia class affects the alpha chains. And there are also gene mutations in your alpha thalassemia. So first one would be your AO, absence of your alpha globin. This would cause the deletion of both alpha globin chains, resulting to no alpha chain production. Then we also have your alpha plus globin chain. Your alpha plus globin chain would result to the deletion of one alpha globin gene, resulting in decreased alpha chain production. And another one would be your alpha thalassemia which is the non-deletional mutation in one alpha globin gene resulting in decreased alpha chain production. Only copy and take note.
So earlier today class, uh, uh, a friend of mine, well, you're copying, I'm just going to share. A friend of mine who's, uh, who's a clinical instructor in Sawai was pag-upload ng recordings. So one of those would be your reduced or absent transcription of messenger RNA due to the mutations in the promoter region or start codon. Class, naalala niyo yung start codon niyo. Do you remember the amino acid that is always your start codon? Walang kamatayang ano. Do you remember? Si Metayanin, very good. Favorite mo ata to Rainy, no? So, si AUG. Now, here's the problem here, class. Kapag, um, let's say, nagkaroon kayo ng problem doon sa, kahit sa isang letter, sa isang letter ng codon, let's say, nagka-problem kayo sa A, that would lead to a problem in your transcription, in, the, in your translation. So, pag may problem kayo sa codon, that could lead to the mutation causing your thalassemia. Another one would be your messenger RNA processing errors due to mutations that add or remove splice sites causing no globin or altered chain production. Another one would be translation errors that change the codon reading frame. So, instead of your, your start codon being AUG, Pwede nagiging AAG siya. Hindi na. Hindi na matutuloy yung ano. So, so, what you call that error as frame shift mutation. Translation errors that change the codon reading frame. Frame shift mutation. Another error, substitution of an incorrect amino acid codon. Missense mutation. Another one would be premature termination due to addition of your stop codon. Nonsense mutation. Plus, can you give me an, no, an example of your stop codon? Naalala niyo pa? AUG. So, imagine nyo, start kayo ng AUG. Tapos, um, yung second codon, bigla kayong bigla kayong napunta sa uh, sa stop codon nyo. So, yan. That's an example of your nonsense mutation. Then, dilution of one or more globin genes, no production or corresponding globin genes. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, class, ng mga mutations. Yung mga mutations na kinakita ko kanina, yung mga silent thalassemia, absence of beta, beta globin, and so on. So kindly copy. Okay, one more minute.
Plus, by the way, wala kayong pasok ng November 1 to 3, ha? So, it was declared by the school. Antayin lang natin yung official memo, pero yun ang sabi ni Dean. Buti na pagkasya natin yung lecture, no? beta thalassemia. Now, this is also known as your thalassemia major, Coolis anemia, Mediterranean anemia, and target cell anemia. So, this is where in beta chain production is either absent or decrease. There is increased alpha chain due to the lack of matching beta chains. Increase fetal hemoglobin. Causes hypochromic and microcytic RBC, target cells, ovalocytes, scabot rings, and Howell jelly bodies. Osmotic fragility and MCV is decreased. RDW, serum iron, and bit and uh, bilirubin are increased. Indirect bilirubin. Copy. Yes, so say yeah, indirect B. Ang alam niyo class ang talasi. Siya ang daming heterozygous beta thalassemia. So in heterozygous beta thalassemia, this is also known as your Thalassemia minor, coolie straight, Rati Greppi Michelli disease. In this one, there is absence or decrease beta chain production at one gene allele. Um, usually, the patient is asymptomatic with mild or no anemia. Cells have moderate degree of microcytosis and poikilocytosis. Target cell and vasopilic stippling are present. Osmotic fragility, hemoglobin, and hematocrit is decreased. Indices are below normal. RDW is increased, and RBC count is also increased. A variation of your heterozygous beta thalassemia will be your del delta beta thalassemia. Clinical symptoms are similar with your beta thalassemia. Another one will be your hemoglobin lepore syndrome. Abnormal hemoglobin that has a normal alpha chain combined with a fused delta beta chain. So ang itsura niyan class would be two alpha, two alpha chains, tapos meron siyang delta and beta chain. That is your hemoglobin lepore. Instead of the normal two adult, 2 alpha 2 beta as adult it would have 2 adult 2 alpha chains and 1 delta beta chain microcytic hypochromic cells are present and lipore migrates with hemoglobin ba S band in electrophoresis can you remember that class hemoglobin lipore migrates with hemoglobin S band in electrophoresis Okay, another one would be your double heterozygotes for beta thalassemia and beta hemoglobinopathies. 
So in this case class, yung individual, may thalassemia gene na siya from one parent and a hemoglobinopathy gene from the other parent. So it's a combination of a thalassemia and a hemoglobinopathy. And in this case class, adult hemoglobin levels are always less than the variant hemoglobin. So an example class would be your sickle cell thalassemia. So this is a combination class of your hemog hemoglobin S, HBS, sickle cell, and thalassemia. Symptoms are similar with your sickle cell disease, except that the MCV and MCH are lower, and HBS A2 is increased than HBSS. There is also splenomegaly from childhood to adulthood. So again, another one would be hemoglobin C, beta thalassemia. So a combination of hemoglobin C class and beta thalassemia. Mild anemia in people of African descent and severe anemia in small percentage of Mediterranean descent. Then hemoglobin E, beta thalassemia. Southeast Asian disease resembling thalassemia major. Class, nare-recall nyo anong hemoglobinopathy yung common sa Pilipinas? What's the hemoglobinopathy common in the Philippines? If you recall. So it's your hemoglobin E. That's why Southeast Asian disease resembling thalassemia major. So hemoglobin E, beta thalassemia class can infect Filipinos as well. Exam nyo sa medyo mahirap. Thalassemia in BARTS. Okay. Then let's proceed to your alpha thalassemia class. So one of those would be your high drops fetalis with hemoglobin barts. So this is the very severe form class of alpha thalassemia. In this case, there is absence of alpha chain. Incompatible with life class. Yung mga batang merong ganito, yung mga newborns. Infants are stillborn or are stillborn or die soon after birth. So in case na ganito class, merong high drops fetalis yung bata, yung fetus. Pagkalabas ng pagkalabas niya ng, ng, sa napupunan ng nanay niya, patay ka agad siya. The reason for that is yung alpha chain kasi there's no alpha chain. They wouldn't be able to bind with your oxygen, thus they would die. Then hemoglobin Bart's class, this is where in there are four gamma chains. Malala niyo yung composition ng fetal hemoglobin niya. What's the composition of your fetal hemoglobin, if you remember? So alpha to gamma. So in this case class, sa fetal hemoglobin niyo, Puro gamma chains. And again, without the gamma, without the alpha chains, they wouldn't be able to bind the oxygen. So kapag merong hydrops fetalis class, ang electrophoretic pattern would be HBA, HBF, and HBA2. HB barts is greater than 80%. Another one would be your hemoglobin H disease. This is also known as your alpha thalassemia major. Three or four of alpha globin genes are absent. Presence of chronic hemolytic anemia resembling intermediate thalassemia. There is decreased MCB and MCH, hypochromic cells, target cells, reticulocyte count of 4 to 5%. There is moderate Heinz bodies and hemoglobin H precipitate are commonly served. 
Okay. Let's go to the third one. You have your alpha thalassemia minor. So mild and resembles beta thalassemia minor. Lacks two out of four globe alpha globin genes. Characterized by mild anemia, microcytosis, and normal serum iron. There is five to six percent of hemoglobin bars in the cord blood. Adult shows no evidence of hemoglobin imbalance. So this would often affect newborns. Often affect newborns. And then another one would be your silent carrier of alpha thalassemia. Disorder that has only one defective alpha globin gene, not associated with any hematologic abnormalities. Another one would be your hemoglobin constant spring, or HBCS. So if you recall class, di ba meron tayong combination ng hemoglobin S sa C, HBSC. Now in this one, HBCS, hemoglobin constant spring, your alpha chain variant has 131 extra amino acids. Class, ilang amino acids ang alpha chain nyo, if you recall? 41. Ilan sa beta? Now, so in this case class, instead of 141, you would add 31 and you would get 172 alpha amino acids in your alpha chain. Now your alpha chain is functionally normal but is synthesized more slowly. Mas mabagal siyang napuputus because you're adding an extra 31 amino acids. But due to having the sufficient amount of your amino acids for your uh, alpha chain, it is functionally normal. Hemoglobin CS migrates slower than hemoglobin A2 at an alkaline pH. Electrophoresis, uh, their pattern in electrophoresis follows like this. HBCS, A2, Bart's then adult hemoglobin. So your fast test would be your CS followed by your A2 Bart's then hemoglobin A2. Okay. So that ends our thalassemia part. Now, let's proceed to your anemia. So before we discuss your anemia class, you have to consider the following. So we have to remember your serum iron concentration. Normally, they are 50 to 150 milligrams per TL. This is an indicator of available transport iron. Then we also have your TIBC. So when you say TIBC, this, this would refer to your total iron binding capacity specifically of your transpirin this is 250 to 400 milligram per dl normally and as in is an indirect indicator of transferrin level then we also have your transferrin saturation 30 percent saturated normally indirect indicator of transport iron and transferrin level. So there's a computation class for your trans percent transferrin saturation. This is computed by using your serum iron divided by TIBC times 100. Then we also have your serum ferritin concentration, 15 to 200 milligrams per dl, indicator of iron storage. Okay. So anemia class is uh, can be caused by a lot of reasons. 
One of those would be anemia due to impaired production of RBC. Under that, this can be caused by deficiency of essential substances such as your iron, which causes your IDA, vitamin B. What does your folic acid class cause? Anong anemia? Folic acid, folate, ano nga ni Mirlas? Uh, wait lang. Minsan sabog yung prop niya eh. Ang issues. Megaloblastic. <laughs> okay. So iron could cause your iron deficiency anemia, your folic can cause megaloblastic anemia, and your vitamin B12 can cause pernicious anemia. Then there could be also be protein deficiency, malnutrition, and quasher core. There also could be due to ascorbic acid, copper, cobalt, and nickel. Plus, ano yung lagi niyong kinakain para magka-quasher core kayo? Panood nyo sa TV dati. Uh, I think what show was that? Um, oh, yun, kamote. Pag puro root crops yung kinakain mo. You could get to have. And what does your root crops contain? Anong laman ng root crops nyo? What is starch? Be more specific. Yes, starch. But what is starch? It's carbohydrates. So if you have high intake of carbohydrates, plus less protein, you'd have anemia. Okay, let's discuss first your iron deficiency anemia. So your IDA results when there is increased need for iron. So this would occasionally occur normally in rapid growth among infants and during pregnancy. So, yung mga pinag-usapan natin before na in pregnancy, there is a mixed, mixed circulation. And when there is mixed circulation, there is uh, increased need for nutrients. Kasi pati yung baby, kumukuha din. Now, uh, a problem in IDA, uh, a non, not normal cause would be in excessive loss of blood that reduces iron reserves such as your hemorrhage, menstruation, or multiple pregnancy. Dati class, when I was in college, nagulat ako na yung menstruation pala kayang mag-cause ng IDA. Yun pala, um, there are some cases wherein yung woman, babae, um, they would have really heavy bleeding that would last from 5 to 10 days. Ewan ko kung may mayoma. May mayoma ata. Yan pag ganyang case eh, Or something. So, kawawa yung mga girls suffering from that. Meron akong classmate, if I recall, nung, nung first year college ako. Um, she would have a tendency to to have a very long menstruation period to the point na hindi na siya nakakapasok. So, she had to stop. Talaga, one month. Grabe. 
One month ka nire-regla way, ah. Oh God. May problema yan. Kailangan mo magpa-check up sa anong ob guy ni pag ganyan. Okay. Nahirap yung ganun. You have to check. Maybe may problem sa hormones. Maybe may problem sa hormones. May, may marami kasing pwedeng ano. Uh, may ganyan din na case na six months, minsan wala, minsan nga isang taon pa, hindi nagme-mens yung babae. Tapos pag nagkaroon siya, sobrang grabe yung, yung bleeding, yung menstruation. Anyways, back on topic. So, dietary absorption is increased in iron deficiency state. So, uh, in iron deficiency state class, your body would compensate by increasing dietary absorption. But this would only only allow for a maximum of 20%. So let's say class, um, kumain ka ng meat. Hydrochloric acid reduces the ferric form to ferrous, to ferrous form in the stomach, which is then absorbed in the duodenum and upper jejunum. Once in the mucosal cell, ferrous form is oxidized back to ferric form and combines with the protein apoferritin to form your ferritin. Lab findings in early iron deficiency anemia class, blood smear shows normochromic normocytic RBC. In late IDA, microcytosis, anisocytosis, poikilocytosis, and hypochromia are present. Reticulocytes, MCV, hemoglobin, and hematocrit are low. Serum iron level is low and TIBC is increased. Okay, let's go to your pernicious or vitamin B12 deficiency anemia also known as your Addison's anemia. So in pernicious anemia class, this is caused by maturation failure of RBC due to vitamin B12 deficiency. This is usually caused by poor absorption, inadequate oral intake, def defective production of intrinsic factor, and interference with intestinal absorption. Lab findings are decreased hemoglobin, RBC count, and hematocrit. Moderate to mark macrocytosis, anisocytosis, poikilocytosis, basophilic stippling, and NRBC. Poikilocytosis class, uh, what type of poikilocyte kaya ang pwede mong makita dito? What type of poikilocyte can you find in your pernicious anemia? Hey, you're not class. Hula, come on. Bakit elliptocyte, Miss Abison? Bakit? The elliptocyte is. Yes, tama. It's your elliptocyte. So you can find elliptocytes here, class. Because so your elliptocytes, diba, if you recall, is a, mac is a macrocyte. So malaki siya. Then there is also presence of enlarged and multilobulated granulocytes. So. 
meron kayo makikita class dito ng mga neutrophils that have around five or more lobes. These are known as macropolysites. Then your bone marrow is hypercellular. So when you say your bone marrow is hypercellular, there is increased production. Increased production of cells. Okay, another one would be your folic acid deficiency anemia. So your folic acid deficiency anemia class manifests a macrocytic megaloblastic type that is similar in morphology to pernicious anemia. This is due to poor dietary intake of folic acid, malabsorption, increased consumption in, in pregnancy, and antagonism between drugs and folic acid. This is similar class with your pernicious anemia. Mas common lang siyang nangyayari um, due, to, due to the main reason we're in. This is usually caused by poor dietary intake of folic acid. So if notice nyo, walang parang pathological effect or pathological cause talaga siya. Then let's go to deficiency of erythroblasts. So we have your aplastic anemia. So in aplastic anemia class, this is characterized by pancytopenia. So all your cell types are decreased. So if your all cell types are decreased class, you have anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. Results from aplasia of the bone marrow. Two types, we have your Fanconis anemia and secondary aplastic anemia. So in Fanconis anemia class, this is the congenital form of your aplastic anemia. While your secondary aplastic anemia results from ionizing radiation, chemical drugs, and viral infection. So to simplify this class, you would get your secondary anemia from chemotherapy. Where in your bone marrow is damaged, causing decreased cell production. Lab findings are anemia is normochromic, normocytic, or macrocytic. Decreased reticulocyte, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia is present. No abnormal cells in the peripheral blood and bone marrow shows hypoplasia. Another type of aplastic anemia class is your pure red cell aplasia. So from the word pure red cell, only red cells class, RBC nyo lang, ang decrease. This is an anemia with normal WBC and platelets and grossly reduced erythroblasts. So this time, wala kayong leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. There are two types. We have your congenital red cell aplasia or also known as your diamond black fan anemia. Appears as early as the first year of life and occurs as late as six years of age. Then we also have your acquired red cell aplasia. Seen in middle-aged adults, selective failure of red cell production. Lab findings would include decreased reticulocyte count, WBC and platelets are normal, and bone marrow shows reduction in developing erythroid cells except pronormoblast. So again, in pure red cell aplasia, 
only your RBCs are decreased. Normal ang WBC nyo and platelets. Two types, may congenital and may acquired. Lab findings include decreased retics, WBC and platelets are normal, bone marrow shows reduction in developing erythroid cells except pronormoblasts. Another type of anemia would be due to infiltration of the bone marrow. So under that, we have your myeloptisic, myeloptisic anemia. This is associated with bone marrow replacement of or involvement with metastatic carcinoma, multiple myeloma, leukemia, lymphoma, lipidosis, or storage disease. Uh, just to explain this class, imagine this is your bone marrow. Now, if you recall, your bone marrow is separated into two types, into two parts. You have the red, uh, the red matter and the yellow matter. So in this case class, in this type of anemia, this would usually involve your cancers. What happens here class is that your cancer cells, your cancer cells would infiltrate the bone marrow and they would replace the red and yellow matter. Papalitan ng cancer cells nyo yung red and yellow matter, yung fat and yung red, red matter niya. Leading to decreased production of cells. Normal blast and immature neutrophils are seen in your peripheral blood. Normochromic and normocytic anemia is present. Reticulocytes are increased. WBC count is normal, reduced, or occasionally elevated. Platelet count is normal or decreased. A typical platelets can be seen. My yellow blast may also be found. Another one that would also be affected by the infiltration of the bone marrow is your sideroblastic anemia. So in this case class, I excess iron, wherein there is defective synthesis of heme due to multiple enzyme defects. There is iron overload in the mitochondria of your normal blast, classified as a myelodysplastic syndrome. So lab findings are hypochromic microcytic cells, increased serum iron, decreased TIBC, increased transferrin saturation, increased bone marrow storage iron, leading to increased sideroblasts greater than 50%. Increased ring sideroblasts. So in this case class, imagine again, this is your bone marrow. This time, iron would infiltrate at a greater amount sa bone marrow. Meron kayong increase bone marrow storage iron. There are two types of sideroblastic anemia. So you have your hereditary sideroblastic anemia, which is X-linked type and found mostly in males. Plus, anong chromosomes ng lalaki? It's the chromosome of male, XY. So this is an X-link type and most commonly found in males and that does not show until adolescent. So mainly ang ina-affecta nito class yung mga lalaki. This is due to congenital enzyme defect in your delta amino acid synthetase or heme synthetase. Then another one would be your acquired idiopathic sideroblastic anemia. can occur in either male or female. Onset is later in adulthood. RBCs may appear megaloblastic. 10% can develop acute leukemia. Defect in heme synthesis and DNA synthesis. Another one would be drug-induced sideroblastic anemia. Occurs in patients undergoing TB drugs treatment, lead exposure, chlorampenicol, or ethanol ingestion.
so that ends our anime. Any questions, Kayo? None. Verifications. Okay, I'll be calling you one by one. Let's have a recitation. Para na rin sa attendance. Miss Korea, are you there? Kate? Okay. Um, give me the the globin chains of your hemoglobin parts. Very good. Uh, Mr. Daga? What is the other name of your congenital pure red cell aplasia? What is the other name of your pure red, congenital pure red cell aplasia? Okay, very good. Miss Colquera? What is the type of anemia that you could get from taking uh mtb M uh treatment for for tuberculosis what type of anemia can you get from the treatment of tb specifically the drug isoniazid What type of anemia would you get from the intake for the treatment for TB? Specifically, isoniazid. No, it's not pernicious. Okay, anyone can help Miss Ano, Miss Calvera. It's not severe hemolytic anemia. All right, it's your hereditary sideroblastic. And then the hereditary. 
<laughs> it's not hereditary. What? Or what type of sideroblastic anemia? All right, it's your drug-induced sideroblastic anemia. All right. Uh, Miss Estolano, Rona, you there? Rona, what type of beta thalassemia has increased fetal hemoglobin? What type of beta thalassemia has increased fetal hemoglobin? Alam mas madali pa rin mag TikTok no kaysa mag recitation. Kaya mo yan, Mrs. Talano, go. What type of beta thalassemia has increased fetal hemoglobin? Alright, very good. It's your homozygous beta thalassemia. Gemotea, Yvonne, are you there? What type of anemia has macrophocytes? What type of anemia can you find where you can find macrophocytes? Macrophocytes are multi-lobe granulocytes. Specifically, your neutrophils. Very good, pernicious anemia. 